I would like to welcome you all to our annual Queens County FFA Banquet. We're excited to see many new and old faces with us tonight as we celebrate our accomplishments over the past year. While you are enjoying the dinner, please feel free to continue to bid on the silent auction items which are along this wall and also in the back. And also place your guesses on the seeds that are over here by the lighted palette. Um, also mingle with new and old friends and look through our chapter scrapbook which is also over there. At this time, I'd like to introduce our 2017-2018 reporter, Audrey Carbon, to bless our dinner. May you please bow your heads. Um, thank you for this day. Um, I hope the knowledge and wisdom that we learn through agriculture um, is received in the future. And thank you for this dinner. Amen. All right, everyone. At this time, I would like to welcome Secretary Barton Felder to the podium. Mr. Barton Felder is currently serving as the Maryland Secretary of Agriculture and also a longtime farmer on the eastern shore of Maryland. Thanks, it's great to be here again at Queen Anne's High School for your FFA banquet and to every one of the FFA members there and the parents who are here, I just wanna say congratulations and thanks just for the great job and the dedication you have to this school, this county, this state, and most of all to agriculture and farming uh, that we're doing here for our future. Um, I don't know if you're going to make an introduction or not, but with me tonight is our, our local resident assistant secretary from Queen Anne's County who's also here. And I told him when I got up here, I'd make sure I put him on the spot and bring him up. So uh, with that, Hans, Hans Schmidt, why don't you come on up with me? I'll, I'll say a few words and give Hans a big hand. Now, you know, we had a couple meetings up in Annapolis and everything. Hans was running behind me. But one thing I, I asked him yesterday, I said, for that FFA banquet over Queen Anne's High School, I said, you know, a lot of these banquets and everything, I said, you know, you don't have to dress all up and everything. So do I have to wear a coat and tie or you know, just wear my ag shirt and, and some khakis and stuff like that? He said, no, no, you're fine. You don't have to wear a coat and tie. <laughs> He does this to me with the governor all the time. Yeah, he, he, he outdresses me all the time. But he's the only person that I know on the shore who grows non-GMO tomatoes. Think about that. <laughs> yeah, hi. <honey. laughs> Let me say this about, I'm gonna, I'm gonna say some things about your commitment to agriculture. Uh, last week, we had an opportunity to visit, and, he, and here, Queen Anne's County, Queen Anne's High School, you and we have a lot of opportunity to continue in agriculture, continue in farming. Last week, our Ag Commission took a tour in Baltimore City, and also in Anne Arundel County, and when we were in Baltimore City, we visited a school called the Green Street Academy, okay? And that's, that's a high school up there in Baltimore City which uh, is what's called a charter school. And they have an agriculture, aquaculture, and an environmental science program. You have to remember this is kind of like in West Baltimore, not in what you would call a great neighborhood or anything like that. When I walked into that school, had the Ag Commission with me, the greeting that we got and the excitement that we got from those students who were there was fabulous. Uh, it was a junior class there, and uh, I don't remember her last name, but her first name was Joy. Uh, you know, the, the student who, who greeted us, she said, welcome to our school. Uh, this is our school. These are my students, and we'd like you to see our program. And uh, we toured the school, and, and they were growing tilapia, yellow perch. Uh, they had a hydroponics classroom set up downstairs. They had... Uh, uh, greenhouses outside and they were growing some things outside and, and actually had chickens and laying hens out there and it was an experience 
none of these students or you say kids would ever have otherwise, but they were committed to furthering their education in school because I said to them, what are your plans after this? And, you know, they started saying to me, well, you know, I'm interested in following up with animal health studies at Penn State University. And, and then after about the third one who said to me they were interested in, in following up their education at Penn State, I said, whoa, 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 wait a minute. What's all the interest in Penn State? You know, we have some, some great education programs right here at Maryland uh, where you can continue. We have a two-year program, four-year program, and all that. Well, I found out Penn State had already visited school, did a recruitment process. So we're going to do some, some follow-ups there and all that. But just the reason why I'm saying it is because the, the good fortune that you all have here, take advantage of it, and we've made a special effort, too, to extend our hand into those urban areas uh, to make sure that people there are getting ag education, not that you're ever going to feed the masses with any kind of farming that's coming out of Baltimore or any urban area here in the state. But it gives all those people a whole lot better knowledge of what agriculture is all about and what we face as farmers and in agriculture here in the state. <clears throat> Just before that, uh, the week before, the governor, as you know, Governor Hogan, when he took office, he made a strong commitment to rural Maryland and staying in touch with Marylanders all over the state. So what we've had and we continue to have is what's called travel and cabinet meetings where we move them around the state and have them in different areas and then when we're in that area, we go out and visit different, I call it points of interest that's, that's in our field or in our industry. So the other week we had a, a cabinet meeting in, uh, in Howard County and you know, some people toured the old Ellicott City where they had the flood problems and everything there. Well, the part of our visit where we went uh, and the lieutenant governor went with us was to a place called Day's End Farm. Has anybody in here heard? Okay, good. You know what Day's End Farm is, then? I've been here for years. Good. It's a horse rescue farm out in Howard County uh, where they you know, bring in those horses, they take them through a whole, um, uh, I guess you would call it rehabilitation process to get them back, what I call, on their feet, healthy again, and then actually do a complete training or retraining exercise with them to be able to replace them uh, back out into, I guess you would call it a healthy home environment where people come there to adopt them. It's a great job, but some of the horses that they had there were, and it got a lot of publicity on all the news throughout Maryland, was from the Wicomico County Farm, from the horses that were there that were deprived and sick and all that. And those horses were there now. They were being taken care of, and they move them through a whole process, uh, you know, as you know, from, from stable to corral and then back out in the pasture, and then once they get retrained, then they can go up for adoption. But they're doing a great job there. Uh, the governor gave them uh, an award. The lieutenant governor um, presented it, and, and we gave them a secretary citation. But uh, just a great program. And then it didn't make the news, I didn't think, that much, but there was also a Frederick County farm since then that had kind of the same issues as, as Wicomico, and they had those horses there uh, treating them likewise. So I don't want to take up too much time. I thought they were, those were kind of two interesting things that were happening out there in agriculture. Every one of the students who are here, I look forward to working with you any way that I can. I hope you further work on furthering your education, either to work for our department and Hans's department or our marketing department or, or one of the other areas, or uh, continue to work hard on, on the family farm and the family farms here on the Eastern Shore are really such an important part of the Eastern Shore economy that uh, we need to all recognize that and make sure that we, uh, we keep them strong. So I, I told Hans to be prepared to speak and uh, he told me he wouldn't take any more than 35 minutes so I'm gonna, 
let him say a few words. Why don't, why don't you fill them in on all the interesting things we've been doing? <laughs> Well, it certainly is a pleasure to be here, and I thank you for your invitation and so forth. I want to thank the Queen Anne's FFA. They came over to, uh, to the department back in February or so, had an opportunity to go downtown, be, meet with legislators, and then came over to the department, and, and Joe gave them a tour about what we do, because we, we cover a lot of things when it comes to customer service, making sure the food security that, um, that is out there for make sure that consumers have healthy foods. Um, in my department, resource conservation, we focus more on the environmental side. Um, you've heard a lot about Chesapeake Bay, and we try to look oversee some of the policy and, and programs and so forth for making sure that Maryland stays on course for meeting their water quality goals for agriculture. I want to thank or congratulate particularly the seniors who might be moving on to bigger and better uh, opportunities. And, and as, as Joe said, you know, in agriculture, there's a lot of opportunities out there. And we're a shrinking, we're a shrinking number. At the cabinet level, at, Joe's, at the secretary's level, Joe's the only farmer at that level. In the state legislature, we have one farmer. We don't have that many farmers who are out there, you know, out there in the policy world. And I encourage you, young folks here and out in the audience, that, you know, think about the opportunities that are out there and please come to the department again and we can sit down and talk. But there's a lot of opportunities out there to voice your concerns, your uh, ability to talk about agriculture, to educate the consumers out there, to educate a lot of folks who are maybe two, three, four generations away from the farm. Because the further you leave the farm, the further away you don't really understand where your food comes from. It doesn't come from the frozen food aisle at your local supermarket. It starts at the farm level. And it's so important, and we need more voices out there talking about what agriculture is. Because if we don't, we're going to lose our opportunity to farm, in, in, particularly here in Maryland. We live in an environmentally sensitive area. And our farmers here are using a lot of progressive practices to produce a healthy food and to, and to um, also provide a healthy environment. And there's, again, a lot of opportunities out there that I hope each one of you has the opportunity to grasp and, and move forward with it. So again, I want to thank you and I thank the parents and the teachers too for a, a job well done. So thank you very much. Come back. Don't leave. Come back. <laughs> so we just wanted to thank you both. And um, as a token of our appreciation, we got you those. <laughs> Peter, 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 Peter. <laughs> the Queen Anne's County FFA and Agri-Science Department could not be successful without its many supporters, just like Mr. Bartenfelder and Mr. Smith. We would like to take this time to thank our community supporters, parents, government officials, and school administrators. As we call you, your business name, or organization, please come forward and remain for a picture. Nagel Farm Services. Y. Angus Research and Education Center. Maryland Department of Agriculture. Maryland Department of Agriculture, Seed and Turf Division. Purdue Farms. Maryland Grain Producers. Queen Anne's County Soil Conservation. Queen Anne's County, County Commissioners. Southersville Lions Club. Southersville Brewerton. Mr. Henry Covington. And Southern States. <laughs> we 
Once again, thank you for your continuous support of our chapter. In addition to these few recognized, we would like to extend a thank you to our parents, families, friends, and administrators for always supporting our goal and doing anything to make it happen. At this time, we would like to recognize our first year FFA members. These members are not only ninth graders, but also upperclassmen who just made the decision to join our chapter. We are so proud of these members that they have jumped right in and participated in field trips, chapter meetings, and competitions. As I call your name, please come forward and remain for a picture. Haley Belcher, Annabelle Branham, Caleb Blake, Madison Carson, Alexander Evans, Shelby Guffiston, Maggie Hutton, Lucas Highland, Lindsey Kenna, Morgan Lewis, Tyler Myers, Allie Milliner, Kaylee Mossberg, Luke Schauber, Regan Walters, Mitchell Kent, and Austin Whaley. Thank you again for all your dedication and hard work to the Queen Anne's County FFA chapter. <laughs> Madam President, I have the application for one student enrolled in the agriculture education who are candidates for the Green Hand FFA degree. Our Constitution outlines minimum qualifications for this degree. We shall now determine if this, candidate's qual this candidate will qualify. Mr. Advisor, do all the candidates have satisfactory plans for a program of supervised agriculture experience? They do. <laughs> have these candidates met all other minimum qualifications of Article 6, Section C of the National Constitution? They have. The secretary will read the names of the successful candidates. As your name is called, please make your way to the front of the room. Amber Mowry. <laughs> All right, will the officers take their places beside me? Will the candidate please rise? Candidates, you are about to receive the Green Hand FFA degree in the National Organization of members who are expected to enter a career in the industry of agriculture. You will strive to further develop your abilities through active participation in the FFA. If so, answer, we will. We will. We will. <laughs> the basic beliefs of the FFA members are outlined in the FFA creed, which will be presented by Audrey Carbaum. I believe in the future of agriculture, with a faith born not of words but of deeds, achievements won by the present and the past generations of agriculturalists, in the promise of better days through better ways, even as the better things we now enjoy have come to us from the struggles of former years. I believe that to live and work on a good farm or to be engaged in other agricultural pursuits is pleasant as well as challenging. For I know the joys and discomforts of agricultural life and hold an inborn fondness for those associations which even in hours of discouragement I cannot deny. I believe in leadership from myself and respect from others. I believe in my own ability to work efficiently and think clearly with such knowledge and skill as I can secure. I believe that I can secure. I believe that less dependence on begging and more power in bargaining. I believe in my own ability to work efficiently and think clearly with such knowledge and skill as I can secure. <laughs> um, I believe in less dependence on begging and more power in bargaining, in the life abundant and enough honest wealth to help make it so for others as well as myself, in less need of charity and more of it when needed, in being happy myself and playing square with those whose happiness depends upon me. I believe that American agriculture can and will hold true to the best traditions of our national life and that I can exert an influence in my home and community, which will stand solid for my part in that inspiring task. Thank you. I hope you will all carry the spirit of the creed in your hearts and in the words in your memory. Career development is a lifelong pro process. Your activities in this organization will help you achieve the ability to co cooperate with others for the benefit of all. A good attitude, a respect for the rights of others, 
are essential for success in life. The fast agricultural complex forms the foundation of the American economy. You have chosen well by your expression of interest in your future career in this, our nation's last field of endeavor. By your enrollment in agricultural education, you have taken an important step towards being a useful citizen in our democracy. May you, like George Washington, use your talents and training for the betterment of yourselves and your fellow man. The FFA is a national organization of young men and women preparing for their careers in agriculture. I am proud to add your name to the role of Queen Anne's County FFA chapter, Maryland State Association, and the national organization. Success in a career and life is largely the result of sound education and willingness to work. Without labor, we accomplish little, and unless our labor, labor is directed by intelligent thinking, we accomplish nothing. The pin worn by green hands is made of bronze. Because of its hardness and endurance, bronze has been used for ages by those, sought a better, those who sought a better substitute for crude stone, stone instruments. May those qualities of hardness and endurance carry you far in our organization. Although you have done well and, and, and merit this recognition, let me remind you that there are heights yet to be attained. Just as there are metals more precious than bronze, there are rarer, more precious laurels to be won in our organization. The silver pin of the chapter degree and the golden charm of the state, state FFA degree await those who earn them. In order to attain these higher degrees, you must possess rare and golden qualities. You must be malleable, but never crushed, ductile, but never drawn into anything base or dishonorable, glowing with enthusiasm, but unaltered by the heat of conflict. It is my sincere wish that some of you will eventually be awarded the golden key of the FFA American degree. Your, your future is before you. Through hard work and wise decisions, you can attain the highest place in our organization, so eagerly sought by all worthy members. The FFA organization practices agriculture leadership, citizenship, and cooperation. If you develop your abilities, you may become a leader in this organization. We need you, and the country needs strong leadership. We now welcome you as a green hand. The advisor will now present you with the green hand pin. Amber, could you please come back up for a picture? And then we done. At this time, we would like to recognize those FFA members who have participated in career development events or leadership development events over the past year. As your name is called, please stand and remain standing. Please hold all applause until the end. In June of 2007, members traveled to Lincoln, Maryland, where they attended the 2017 Maryland State Convention. Over the three days, members competed in the CDEs made friendships with members from across the state and gained leadership experience. The following competitions were competed in by the following students at the Maryland State Convention. FFA Knowledge, Malin Rhodes, Jennifer Gannon, Colton Wilson. The team placed seventh in the state and Jennifer placed third individually. Florida Culture, Malin Rhodes, Leslie Moore, Audrey Carbom, Brooke Yeager. Environmental Science and Natural Resources, Jennifer Gannon, Colton Wilson, Quinn Williams, and Peter Arnold. Public Speaking, Peter Arnold, placed first place in junior extemporaneous speaking. Quinn Williams placed fourth place in junior extemporaneous speaking. And FFA talent, Malin Rhodes placed second.
Members went to Chesapeake College on March 16, 2018 to the Region 5 Public Speaking Competition and participated in extemporaneous prepared employment skills and creed speaking CDEs. Please stand when called. Prepared speaking. Audrey Carbon. Colton Wilson. Brooke Yeager. Junior extemporaneous. Amber Mallory. Senior extemporaneous. Peter Arnold. Quinn Williams. Creed, Allie Milner. Employment skills, Jennifer Gannon and Melin Rhodes. <laughs> Congratulations to all the members who have competed in the CDEs the past year. We look forward to another hardworking and successful year in 2018-2019. Once again, I'd like to thank all the members for their hard work this school year. Uh, we went to a number of these different uh, competitions, and I've seen countless hours put in by them, both in my classroom, at home. Um, and so we, we should all give them another round of applause for their hard work all school year. So at this time, I'm going to present the seniors with a sash to wear at their high school graduation. Um, acknowledging for them for their hard work and dedication. This year we have two seniors who applied to be a recipient of the FFA sash. Jennifer Gannon and Morgan Elburn are our 2018 recipients. All right, so um, this time I'd like to recognize um, Jennifer Gannon for her uh, continued FFA loyalty and her duties that she has performed as our FFA president. So before she does her retiring, um, she doesn't want me to call it this, but her retiring address, um, I'm going to say a few kind words about Jen. Um, you know, I, I'm, this is my second year teaching here. I took you know, role of the FFA advisor about two years ago, and I still think back to this day at the 4-H park, um, walking up in the summertime, not really sure what to expect, and I think they kind of, after first meeting me, were kind of like, this guy is, is who is this guy, you know, and, um, you know, I hope, I, I think uh, over the past two years, they've, they've grown to uh, enjoy my company, maybe, and, um, you know, and I hope they've learned, you know, something from me um, and all of the, you know, fun activities that we've done and the, and the places that we've gone together. Um, but kind of back to Jen, um, you know, Jen and I, we've, as president the past two years, we've, you know, obviously not seen eye to eye on everything that the chapter has done. And I'm sure that she has, um, you know, wanted to hit her head against the wall a few times at some of the things I've done. And, and uh, I don't think I can say the same about her and me wanting to hit my head on the wall. Um, but um, one thing that she has done that, that is really memorable to me is, is um, the Maryland Grain Producers Board does a grant each year. And, and um, Jen has really spearheaded over the past two years. We've, we've gone, we've kind of rallied all the troops up here. And in January, we went down to the Hilton on, on, in Graysonville and presented in front of a, a room full of uh, board members uh, you know, walk, we all walked in there in, in, our, in our official dress and, and presented uh, in front of that board and, you know, earned a, a grant to go on a couple field trips. And, and one of those um, was to go to the Maryland Department of Agriculture, uh, meet, you know, meet with Joe and Hans over there. And that was a very valuable learning experience, um, seeing all the different things that go on at the Maryland Department of Ag every day. Um, so I am forever grateful for you guys opening your doors to us. Um, and then just uh, Tuesday, we went to uh, Salisbury and um, went to see all the Purdue factories, their, their grain mills, uh, their innovation center where they develop new products, and, um, and none of that. And we also went to an organic chicken farm up in um, Henderson, Maryland. And so uh, none of that would have been you know, possible for, for me necessarily because I wouldn't have known about it. And, or for our, the members of our chapter. And so that's w just one example of Jen's hard work. Um, each, you know, each and every um, event that goes on with our chapter, Jen is always there, um, 
you know, you know, seeing what needs to be done, staying after, going home, and working on, on things more. Um, and you know, I know that there's going to be, you know, we're going to we're going to really miss Jen as as we kind of go into our next year. Uh, I hope that she's not going to, you know, give us the peace sign when she walks out the door today and then never come here again. But um, I hope that she still kind of, you know, looks to kind of give the the, the new members of our officer team advice. Um, and you know, I, I hope that she's, you know feels welcome in my room every day. So um, I don't want to talk too, too long about her, but um, Jen has been a, a valuable member of our, of our um, officer team in this chapter, and I think we should all give her a, a, a warm you know, thank you and welcome. So. Well, good afternoon. So as Mr. Stokes said, um, over the past four years, I've been a member of the Queens County High School FFA. And over the past two years, I've served as president. And being on an officer team like this one, um, you've learned so much, not only leadership skills, but you make best friends on it. So it's a really good experience. If anyone would even consider it, I would totally recommend it. Um, it does take a lot of hard work, but it's totally worth it in the end. Um, through FFA, I've also gotten to go on many different like field trips, as Mr. Stokes said. We've gone to National Convention, which is in Indiana, which I'll never forget, so it's a great experience. Um, I just want to say thank you to like a few people for making it so great. Uh, my family, my officer team, anyone who's been on it, Morgan too, <laughs> Mr. Stokes, and then also all the members for like supporting all of the field trips and stuff like that and coming to everything. Um, if I could give any advice to like any of you guys, it would be to be entirely present wherever you go and to put everything you have into everything you do. And at the end, you won't be able to regret it because you did everything you could. So, thank you. Jennifer, thank you for your years of service to the Queen Anne's County FFA chapter. You've put blood, sweat, and tears into your two years of presiding over the chapter and have done a wonderful job of fulfilling your duties. You've been a role model to the other officers in the chapter. The officer team runs to you in times of trouble and confusion to seek your advice and wisdom. Your hard work has truly paid off and has greatly improved our chapter. It has not gone unnoticed. As you move through your journey in the agriculture pathway, may you always remember the leadership skills that FFA has taught you. We can never thank you enough for all you've done in the past two years of being our president. Please accept this plaque as a token of our appreciation. Ladies and gentlemen, your 2016-2018 Queen Anne's County FFA president, Miss Jennifer Gannon. So at this time, I'd like to go ahead and, and start with the announcement of our, of our chapters for the 2018-2019 um, officer team. Um, before I do so, I want to talk a little bit about how they were selected, uh, the process of you know, what they go through to kind of become uh, you know, or, or change positions in our officer team. So um, they were all required. They were given about two weeks to um, complete a resume to complete the application to become an officer, uh, which asks them some background questions of you know, their GPA and, and things they are involved in, uh, both in school and out, outside of school. Um, and also they had to write a, a kind of a letter of intent as to what they really want to get out of, the, out of this experience, um, you know, being a part of the officer team. Um, once they've completed that application, it gets turned into to myself. And then um, we had a review. Um, we had officer interviews, and so it was a, a five-person panel that, that the, um, each officer uh, went in and, and interviewed in front of, and they got asked a few questions about, um, you know, if, if there were challenges they were faced with, how would they overcome them, um, you know, presenting us with, you know, things that might have been on their, on their application packet, um, and they all did a great job. Um, the, that panel was made up of myself. Um, Jen, as a retiring president, was, uh, was sitting on that panel. And then we had three different people from the agricultural community uh, that, that sat in and, and provided input as to the things that, that they saw and, and from their experiences running um, their organizations. So it was a collective panel that kind of puts these people, I'm sorry, not these students, um, in, in the appropriate place 
um, that, that they you know, really best see fit. Um, I think they are all equally capable of running all the positions if they are given the opportunity. Um, and so it is a very difficult and, and challenging process to put them in these, these, these positions. And it's honestly probably the, the, the least um, exciting thing I, I like to do each year because you know there's going to be somebody that's happy and, and there's going to be somebody that, that may be upset or, or you know. But I think through their, their, um, their learning and, and being a part of this organization, I think they're all um, able to overcome you know, the, any disappointments they may face um, to end up being a, a, you know, a, a valuable, productive member of our officer team. So, um, so at this time, I'd like to start um, by introducing um, the five candidates. Uh, the five candidates that interviewed this year, um, if you could stand when I, when I say your uh, name. Uh, Amber Mowry, if you want to come on up front, Amber. Um, Brooke Yeager, Audrey Carbom, Malin Rhodes, and Peter Arnold. So when I advise you guys, um, I'm going to, you're going to move to the um, place in which I call you to be associated with. So uh, the, the panel um, voted to, to put Amber as the Queen Anne's County reporter for the 2018-19 school year. Uh, the panel um, also decided to, to put Brooke Yeager as our treasurer for 2018-2019 school year. Panel then elected to uh, place Audrey Carbom as the Queen Anne's County Secretary for the 2018-19 school year. The panel then decided to uh, vote Malin Rhodes as the Vice President of the Queen Anne's County FFA Chapter for the 2018-19 school year. Lastly, the, the, the panel of, of judges voted to elect Peter Arnold as the Queen Anne's County President for the 18-19 school year. At this time, we'd like to do our formal uh, uh, transition of, of powers. All right, Peter, as president-elect, you have been selected by your fellow members to be the leader of our chapter for the coming year. You are therefore responsible for guiding our chapter in all its worthy undertakings. May you work intelligently and seriously to fill the, fulfill the responsibilities of your office. Melinda Rose, as vice president-elect, you record your record of accomplishment indicates you you have those qualities of leadership which we should all possess. You are to assist the president in directing the work of our chapter, preside over meetings in her absence, and keep all committees working, working efficiently. Audrey Carbaum, as secretary-elect, you have been chosen to keep accurate, minute, me, accurate minutes of our meetings to carry on the chapter correspondence. You should provide the chapter with the order of business and committee assignments for each meeting. You will also keep a list of members, a record of degrees awarded, and have custody of the Constitution and bylaws. Brooke, as treasurer-elect, you have been placed in a position of trust. Your duties require you to keep an accurate record of receipts and disbursements and to provide regular financial reports. It is also your responsibility to assist in developing the chapter budget and maintaining sound financial practices. Amber, as reporter-elect, your duty is to inform the public about FFA. You are expected to work closely with the news media, include state and national FFA publications. You should keep a record of photo photographs and articles published concerns the FFA and its members and be responsible for compiling our FFA history. It is an honor to be elected as an officer in the FFA. 
From time to time during the year, you may encounter difficult problems, but through cooperation, hard work, and dedication, you will succeed and the FFA will prosper. Do each of you accept the responsibilities of your office, and will you do your best to uphold the ideals and principles of the FFA? If so, answer, we do. We do. I now declare each of you properly and duly installed in the respective office to which you were elected. May your year of service be marked by integrity, dedication, and cooperative spirit. Seek harmony among your fellow officers and set high standards of leadership for all the chapter members. Uh, Madam Secretary, do you have any record of further business which should now be transacted? Um, I have none, Madam <laughs> Mr. President. <laughs> Does any member know of any new or unfinished business which should properly come before this meeting? No. All right. Uh, we are about to adjourn the meeting of the Queens County um, FFA chapter. As we mingle with others, let us. Be diligent in labor, just in our dealings, courteous to everyone, and above all, honest and fair to the game of life. Fellow members, guests, join me in the salute to our flag. I pledge allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the republic for which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I now declare this meeting adjourned.